let's check out a battle report more season of war iron jaws versus gets this time thanks to my panda patron why barry makes good art check him out on instagram and baron of dice sells dice uh buy dice use code mdg to support the channel all right, let's check it out. Season of War has begun. Oh, it's loud in my ear. Hope that wasn't loud in yours. This video is brought to you by the support of our channel members and the FLGS partners, Warp Fire Minis and X Planet. I think these guys make Baron the best Dice battle reps. Baron is the exclusive dice supplier for Season of War. And Take a look for me too. Their incredible designs, or even get your own custom dice. Yeah, made. check out these guys. They're Hello sick. Hello and welcome to Season of War. Today we are excited to bring you another game of Age of Sigmar. My name's Jordan. I am joined by Steve tonight. How's it going? Uh, local legend with uh, Iron Jaws and uh, uh, other armies as well, but you've been rocking the, the orcs for a while here. Yep, yep. Uh, so since the, the new supplements come out, it's been a lot oh, of really? fun testing out the, the new units and playing around and getting a change of change of pace from uh, some dog. of the other armies that I play. Yep, makes sense. <laughs> And we don't see a lot of like pure iron jaws lately. We've, it's been all bidwa or a lot of bidwa kind of in the meta. So yeah, yeah, like the 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 number of iron jaws players specifically has been very very small. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's nice to be a a purist. Yes, dude. Whenever I play iron jaws, I always feel like I ran out of steam. I always feel like I have a, a pretty good first couple turns, and then by the end of the game, I'm tabled because because four up save reasons. <laughs> and around here, you've definitely shown I think that's that the, the biggest the, problem, the straight up. Iron Jaws uh, still have a lot of strength in them. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Cool, well, jumping into things, we are playing Fountains of Frost tonight, so we got six objectives on the table. It's hold one, hold two, uh, hold more scoring. The twists with this one are if you have, if there are three units at the end of the turn on any objective, on a four up, that objective explodes and potentially hurts everything on the objective. And then the other thing is wizards count as 10 models. Sorry, Adorian Locuses count as 10 models. Not just uh, any wizard, so I have one. Uh, I do not have any. Yeah, you have got all <laughs> aggro, no magic. All damage, saying. no cast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, with that, um, Steve, do you want to jump in and take us through your list? All right, so uh, we've got three units of brutes, uh, two units of five, along with a unit of 10, all equipped with the jagged gore hackers for the extra rent. Um, we've got a Mog Runto with a hacking crew uh, for that sweet rampage that he does where yeah. he gets to do another charge after charging. Uh, Mog Crusher, obviously, can't go anywhere without a Mog Crusher. Equipped with the Baston and Destroyer for some really big beat stick. Uh, we're actually going to try out Zogrok Anvil Crusher. Anvil Smasher? Anvil Smasher. Anvil Smasher. Uh, this time. So I've never used him before, but I'm, uh, I'm excited to give him a try with his uh, Mortal Wounds on Sixes. Uh, we've got the two war chances, one with the fix and beat so that he can heal up some people and the 3d6 charge right there on the uh, get him beat. And then of course, can't go anywhere without pigs, so we got a unit of six pigs. Nice, yeah. Mon okay, so let's have a look at this. Um, are we one drop? No, it looks like he's two drops with Zog Rock. Straight away, I think the list would be better if you drop Sog Rock and throw in another unit of Brutes. So you are you have 2 times 10 Brutes. You are 30 points under and you're only one drop. So if you're, if you're going, you might as well go all the way. I don't particularly like Hulk and Brute on the Mega Boss. Not, but, I mean, like, like, it's fine. Like that's it's fine. I guess I'm just kind of biased towards playing um, war chanters or um, weird knob shamans, right? I mean, Zogrok, Zogrok is looking like he's missing some targets. Like what? What are you Zogrocking? Is it the unit of pigs? Cause correct me if I'm wrong, but Zogrok uh, is like sixes or mortals, right? Hold on, I'm just waiting for my slow northern internet to load up. Because it's slow and still cold up here. I still have two feet of snow in my front yard, guys. I still got two feet of snow. Here's the crazy thing, okay? I have two feet of snow in my front yard. And it's been a very mild winter. Like, I'm looking at my winter thinking, like, man, this winter was, like, absolutely nothing. Like, this winter was so warm and light on the snow. Sorry. Um, okay, so what am I looking for to learn this game? Well, I guess we'll see what Zogrok is like. Um, 
see what kind of output Zogrog can do. Hopefully we see a best case scenario. Uh, I want to see the, the hack and crew jump over some, some gits and get into the back line. I think that would be cool. And uh, we're also just sort of, we're also interested to see, um, I don't see in this list a, um, what do you call it, um, null stone adornment. I don't see a null stone adornment. So uh, that's interesting. Yeah, Sagarok is six. Uh, wait, hold on. On a four up or a two up, unmodified hit rolls of six, one mortal wound in addition. Okay. I don't see a null stone adornment. I'm sure that he has one. And you've been rocking a ton of blood tooths uh, lately. We only had six pages for you here today, though, but yeah. that's, you're, so you're trying something a little different. Oh, he's yeah, going for yeah. Iron so Suns. So today is going to be okay. Iron Suns. We're going to be uh, charging in your charge phase. Yep. Uh, just, to, just to mess you up on some of your plans there. Makes Let's sense. see how that and works out, too. I don't play a lot of Iron Suns. Things. Oh, yeah, keeping that momentum going, yeah. especially with the changes now that we don't lose it turn yes. by turn. Yeah, this will be the first time we've had him on since... Uh, the battle scroll, so... It's the first time I'll be using them since Perfect. the battle scroll. Perfect, yeah, so. good test for everyone. <clears throat> but then for myself, I'm playing Gloom Spike Gits, uh, Jaws of Mork here. As you can probably tell, I've got lots of squigs, so they're gonna get plus one attack on the charge with Jaws of Mork. And to jump right into it, I've got a big unit of 36 squig herd, uh, 36 squigs and then six herders. Obviously, have been notorious uh, since the, the new book has come out. I think this is going to get changed in the next edition. I strongly recommend that Herd go down to one wound. I was playing um, a game actually last night against a player who runs two double reinforced units of Herd. So it's like, you know, 72 Squig Herd and Jaws some work in the Clammy Hand. And so he brought back uh, like an, um, 36 more Squigs. And each one has two wounds, and a lot of them have a five up board. And uh, like, it's just ridiculous. It's just, it's just too many wounds. It's just far too many wounds. It's it's ludicrous. It's out of control. Uh, what those guys can do. I do then have two units of uh, Boind Rot Bounders as well. Both uh, this looks a lot like to, my to list. 10-man units. And then I have a good cast of support heroes and units. Starting off with the Sneaky Snufflers, who can give out ward saves or potentially plus one attack if they give out a six. Uh, it's really easy. Ridge, all you got to do is roll a three up. I don't know why it's so hard. And then I've got a Squid Boss, who's going to... You either give out mushrooms, he can do a pregame move with the Squid Herd, so just good tech piece there. I then have a Loon Boss on Mangler Squid, which isn't a super common piece, but here uh, he is my general. He's got uh, the command trait that gives him plus one hit and wound on the mounted. Yeah, I don't know. If you're gonna play, if you're gonna play this this model, if you're if you're like, okay, I want to play a, a Loon Boss on Mangler Squid, and I want him to be my general. Why wouldn't you take? The one where he fights and runs away. Like, to me, that's just the whole point. Is that he, this guy's going to be super annoying. So that he's going to bounce through your lines. And then he's going to just, like, m move and and disappear. I don't know. To be honest, I'm not even sure what this... Uh, what the Squig Whisperer um, ability even does. Let's Detach, just finish which, it off here. both the gobs and the balls and chain. And then I have the artifact that gives his gobs an additional rent. And no teleport. Uh, so hopefully he's gonna be lethal here tonight. Let's see whose beat sticks more beady. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mine's a little smaller, but he makes up for it in ferocity. I then have two wizards here, uh, one being Scragrot, uh, the Loon King. So he's just got a ton of uh, flexibility and tech, and knows the whole spell lore. So good. Beats, which is awesome. And then I have a Madcap Shaman as well. He has uh, Hoarfrost as his chosen spell. And he's got the artifact, uh, the Moonface Mommet, which is another amazing one. Uh, if I can make something within 12 inches, minus one to save. Combined with teleports, I can get that around and positioned where I want to when I need it. But that's it for the army. Uh, my power's mostly in a few centralized units, so. Well, yeah, it's in Boing Rods and Herd. And I'm gonna start the moon over here in like the uh, southwest uh, corner for the camera. So this is where the moon is gonna start in this table quarter and then slowly move across the battlefield. But Steve, uh, you outdropped me here being two drops. Uh, double battle reg? Always. Uh, single battle reg okay. and one extra here. Okay, nice. Well, it is going to give you choice of who goes first because I was four drops here. Then uh, I think, sir. So the squig 
The Squig Whisperer, what it does is it gives plus one to hit and wound rolls for attacks made with the mount. So that would be, I'm guessing, the huge fang-filled gob. So what he's doing is he's getting plus one, plus one on four dice. I don't know if the ball and chain counts. I guess it was, it'll was it say... Yeah, so it also counts the ball and chain. So the ball and chain has seven dice, so it's 11 dice. So for 11 attacks, he's going from... Looks like threes and threes to twos and twos for 11 dice. So, you know, that's not the worst thing. Like, that's not that's not bad, I don't think. Right? Plus one, plus one on 11 is like you're adding a lot more consistency. So, and like, um, seven of those attacks are on two rend and D3 damage. D3 damage is good. So, I just prefer fight another day. After it fights, after all the attacks have been resolved, they can make a 2d6 move. Um, and they re they essentially 2d6 retreat after they fight. And I personally think that's a lot better. Because the Loon Boss on Ming of the Swig has 14 wounds, but only has a 4-up save. And uh, has no ward or anything. So, it's like... Yeah. So, I personally like the like that one because i just i value the mobility but i guess the loon whisperer like that or squig whisperer that, that's fine like it's i'm gonna give you the first turn i wouldn't okay. say it's bad because, uh, i just it's not my good to me yet. Yeah. but plus one yeah, plus one sense. that's good well with that we'll just be jumping into loon swipe gets turn one don't you wish you put the moon in his quadrant so okay so here's a big problem with with gloom spike gets especially well i should say it's a problem with the army but it's a problem that i have with the army uh managing auras it's like Gobblepalooza got to be holy within 12. Sneaky Snuffler's got to be holy within 12. Um, Release the Squig's got to be holy within 12. The Squig boss, you have to be within three. There's, there are, uh, and then you're talking about the Bad Moon Moonlight. There's so many different ways that you have to be within ranges or that I personally find it quite challenging. And the first big challenge is always like uh, unleash the Squigs and then having them run in charge. So making sure that whatever quadrant you pick is where the enemy actually is going to be. So we'll start off by rolling primal dice. I'll just roll them for both of us, and we get two each. Then I'm going to go for magical dominance for my battle tactic, because both my wizards are out of uh, unbind range. And I'll just go for heroic leadership for my heroic action. I'm over the season, CP. guys. I'm ready for something my new. My best case here is I'm just going to go for heroic leadership as well. And we'll put that on the mock Crusher here. And we'll get that. Then for spells, I'm going to start off with the Madcap Shaman. He's going to cast a Horror Frost. And Where's I don't that? get that, and I don't want to use a Primal because of that one, unfortunately. Are you sure? I'm it's destruction. I'm, I'm tempted to. <laughs> I do love Primal Because not a lot of stuff though. would care in my army, but killing my heroes would matter. <laughs> then Scragrot, I guess we'll just cast the Mystic Shield. Well, I guess he does have a Teleport. Get, and I'll put Scragrot that on exists. one of the units of Bounders. And there's nothing really else for me to cast here because I actually don't plan on charging, surprisingly <laughs> enough. But I'm then going to go into uh, some other buffs. The Squid Boss is going to use Yellow Lurkas on the, uh, the Squid Herd, so that will be the Mortal Wounds on Sixes for the Mouths. And then he's going to use his ability to give them a Hero Phase move. And they will move a total of eight inches. So... Like, when I play Gits, what I do is I always Alpha Strike my Hurt. Because I'm playing Clammy Hand and King's Gits. So it's like, I want to Sneaky snuff their 5 up for them, and then I want to send them. So if I'm looking at this table right here, it's like... So, uh, what map are they on again? What map did they say they were on? Oh, I'm so bad. Uh, Towers, Towers of Frost, right? That's what they said. So if I pull up Towers of Frost... I'll pull it up. Let's watch. Then after the movement, my sneaky snufflers are going to try and give their buff out. Three up. Easy. Like I said, <coughs> uh, so those squids are going to have a five up ward save. And that's it for my hero phase, so we're going to jump into the rest and of the And yeah, game. and then I would move, and then I would charge, and I would want to hit the hacking group. Like, don't I don't want you building momentum. I don't want you getting at me, so I'm just going to come at you. Every by supporting the channel through our YouTube membership. Hit the join button below the video to learn more support these guys they make great bottle reps
All right, so that's it for movement, and I'm not gonna go for any charging. I have no shooting in this army, because who needs shooting when you have uh, giant mouths with sharp teeth? I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, just pin them in this, in this I deployment zone. I did get the five-up board up on my squid herd, and as opposed to like, I mean, you could always rush up and try and yeet one unit in, but when it can get counter-attacked and counter-charged in, in my own turn by so many units, really didn't seem like the wise decision. Though I am with this list already fearing some of the strengths of Iron Jaws is obviously the mobility with uh, Danny. 36 squig herd, okay, is two wounds each. So that's 72 wounds. And then if you are, um, if you are, if you have a five up ward, that means that you have to do, uh, well, what's, I can't remember the formula. It's like, yeah, that's right. So you have to deal 108 wounds to the herd before they die. And if you don't do, if you only do 96, you're bringing back 10 more models on average. Like, but again, my strategy is King Skits and Clammy Hand. So if I eat the herd and they pin you and then my opponent takes everything that they have and they and they delete them, it's like, okay, well, I pinned you for a turn, so you have no movement, and uh, you killed the herd on your turn, but then on my, at the end of my turn, I'm, I'm bringing half of them back anyway. And you just sort of, like, pin them back and take map control while everything, like, spreads out, the bounders, like, lurk around. And things but where they want to go. I do lose a lot with squigs, so controls. maybe... And I don't have... <laughs> maybe you should I listen really to me. screening with, so there's a big risk there. I did Probably get an awesome shield, which will help a little bit with the defenses, and the squigs are trying to take off, take up the front of the army, uh, where I might get hit. And with, obviously, anything you do throw in, there's always the risk of the double coming back, and hopefully I could clap you back uh, if you come in too uh, super hard. But that's about it. Didn't have anything crazy. Would have loved the hoarfrost on those um, uh, Squigs, rank three would be amazing. Oh, you should have used that primal, guys. I know, I know. <laughs> I was sorely tempted, um, but that would have been a big deterrent for coming in. They're still scary on their own, so, um, and they're doing mortal wounds on sixes at least, so still some scary stuff going there, but that's going to be it for uh, my turn with uh, Gloom Spike Gits. Steve, we're going to throw it over to you. Jump All into, right. yeah, Iron Jaws, turn one. Bottom of round one, the first turn for Iron Jaws. I think we're going to uh, select our battle tactic to be intimidate the invaders. So we're gonna have more than half of our units outside of our territory. Yep, easy to do. Very easy on this <laughs> map, you know? And for a heroic action, I think we're gonna go for a command point on the mock Crusher there. And we don't get that. Okay, well, we're gonna go for one with Stride Drop as well. And we also fail. Yeah, we're very commanding this turn. Yes. <laughs> All right, so let's see some hero phase stuff. Uh, I think we're going to have the War Chanter, uh, grants out the Violent Fury, I'm going to use a token for that, on these pigs. And the second War Chanter, I think, is going to throw that down on the Brutes here, because you look pretty close. Alright, so we're going to do the uh, Power of the Great Green God uh, from Zogrok onto the uh, Gore Gruntas here. Uh, so that's going to go off on a 2+, plus because I have the Gruntatongs. And oh, <laughs> I wanted to, to see it! Wounds. <coughs> oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> Rage, I feel your pain. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Somebody was telling me that they hate the idea of two ups in 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 a game. That if if it's going to be a two up, that it should just be guaranteed. That if it's either guaranteed or it's a three up. Uh, then I guess we go into mighty destroyers. Uh, let's start with some. Pictures. And I can understand why they feel that way. And number two, I think we're going to do the Magranta. So yeah, let's do the third one with these brutes here. All right, so I think that's gonna be the end of the hero phase. Let's go into movement. Yeah, running everything up, all right. And yeah, I think I'll redeploy the snufflers here. And they will move two inches. He's going for the shrine.
And he'll get it too. Just it's just not screened out on that side. So that's the end of the movement phase. Go ahead and do some shooting. Now. Again, it's like, uh, like, if he hacking crew gets in and blows up the shrine, I'm gonna be kind of disappointed. Lamar, I'm gonna shoot into the squid here. I got four. Four shots on twos and threes, and three hits. To one wound, minus one. It goes through. All right, one damage. You wound a squig. Oh, yes. All right, now, for the fun part, we're gonna go into the charge phase. And I think I'm gonna declare a wah here. Okay, <laughs> yep. And uh, start of the charge phase, we're gonna use our war chanter here to grant the 3d6 charge with the get em beat. And we're gonna use that on these picks right here on a three plus. We're doing great with these yeah. today. <laughs> so no 3d6, but let's- uh, That's let's okay. These guys first. <clears throat> so Hulking Brood, I always forget what it is. I mean- And yeah. because we did a charge move with the Mogranto, we're gonna gain some momentum. And we gain d3 with one momentum, so we go up to two. Looks like he's not getting into the shrine. And last but not least, he wants to join the party too. Oh, he always wants to join the party. I must have missed well, that. That three four is gonna be pretty bad. So I must have missed that. Let's see. One. It goes through. All right, one damage. You wound a squid. So the he mongrels over here. Looks like he just All charged right, in now, here. For the fun part. We're gonna go into the charge phase. And I think I'm gonna declare a wah here. Okay. <laughs> yep. So reroll uh, charges, start of the right? Charge phase, we're gonna use our war chanter here to grant the 3d6 charge with the get em beat. And we're gonna use that on these picks right here on a three plus. We're doing great with these yeah. today. <laughs> so no 3d6. But let's uh, let's go ahead and charge these guys first. No, it's add one to charge rolls, not re -ro not re-roll them. And because we did a charge move with the Mogranto, we're gonna gain some momentum. And we gain D3 with one momentum. So we go up to two. And last but not least. He wants to join the party too? Oh, he always wants to join the party. Well, that three, four is gonna be pretty bad. So we're gonna use a command point there and re-roll that into a nine perfect and because of our command trait hulking brute on a two plus we're going to deal d3 mortals so let's see two more mortal wounds on those on that oh, and i actually forgot before i had the ward save so ward saves i would actually save uh both of those because i forgot to roll the ward before so i just right. five up ward one. on I squeaks it for is pretty overpowered uh, um, so let's go ahead with some monstrous rampages. Um, over there, I don't think I'm gonna get my special rampage off because I need to roll a one or a two. Okay. Um, so I think, so you know what? I am gonna roar okay. the Mangler Squig there. And the Mangler Squig is roared. Yeah, okay. And then, yeah, well, let's do a, I think we're just gonna stomp here because they can't do much else. And we'll do our special stomp. So on a two up, there's our two. And you'll D3 plus three mortal wounds for five mortal wounds. Nice. Hulking, or that ability is really I good. Destructive will save bulk. one of those. Take four. <coughs> Two squigs down. Like three mortal wounds. And then the mangler is just going to right? more. Right, uh, because it's plus three. Back. So it's does. like on a two right. up, get, dealing three right, mortals so the the by itself is good. Like it's a lot of mortals. I think we actually have to go all the way here and I'm going to have to pop my destroyer to make sure I kill all these squigs. You're not going to kill all and the herd, bro. I think I'm going to activate the uh, gore grunt is here. And I am gonna use all the defense here because I can't do it anywhere else. And I'm gonna be all- So here's my prediction. The, the herd doesn't die, okay? And the herd bites back. And uh, this is the top first round. Oh no, this is, and then we'll see what the prio is like. Okay. We'll see what prio is uh, like. The first of three issued here. So let's do the riders first on twos and threes. And threes. So it's gonna be four, eight, nine at minus three rend. 
Okay, I am plus two to save, so I will still be on a five. Why minus three? Oh, right, Iron Jezwa. And I saved two of them. So. That's two damage apiece. Yeah, so that's gonna be 14 damage. So I still have a couple left until the mounts. <laughs> and now the pigs will fight. All right, so on twos. Is he into a unit of bounders? You have to do one more wound to finish them off. One more, one, uh, I don't know if I'll do it. <laughs> Threes. That's a bummer, those uh, bounders three, are a lot of points. Six, nine, 12, at minus one. On threes, you get them. All right. And it's okay, gonna... They're, gonna, they're gonna come back. All right, now we're gonna do our most fun smash and bash. Let's go ahead and go to the, I think we're gonna do the Mog Runter. All right, so we'll just throw everything into the snufflers there. Okay. When the Mog Runner attacks, it only deals six damage to the sneaky snufflers, failing to take them down and disrupting smashing and bashing. So not as much as I was hoping for. Yeah. <laughs> No, I feel like they, when they're low on momentum, they always underwhelm a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that does mean, though, I get to choose the next activation. And you pulled out my, my general, so I'm just going to have to go with the squid herd. Yeah, sounds good. Does it sound good? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with the squids fighting back, they're splitting their attacks. We got 18 into the brutes and uh, 10 into the mega boss. So we're going to roll the brutes first. We are doing mortals on the stitches here. We got a few. Oh, boy. <laughs> so there's going to be 12 mortals off the top. And Wound on threes. We're gonna have 17 at Rend one. This may have been a mistake. <laughs> All right, so Rend one, that's gonna make us on five up stage. Okay. All right, 10 go through. So 10 plus we had 12, so 22 damage in total. 22, geez, so that's gonna kill seven. <laughs> oh my God. Three, four. This is one of those times when you Five, see a, like a model on the table six, and what it does is seven does not line up with what it looks like. <laughs> no. And I just realized it was the mortals on stitches is in addition. So I still have 12 more uh, attached to wound with, which is going to give you only 10 more at run one. Only 10 more. <laughs> All right. On fives. So I take seven more. You're going to kill two more. <laughs> All right. All right, we're, we're, we're doing fine. We're doing fine. And then we will have yep. the, the 10 stage into the mega boss. Starting off with five mortals. And 10 attacks at rend one. All right, so because we're on a three up save, it's gonna go to four plus. And that one's gone. Two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven. We don't wanna save today. Yeah. Another eight more. So Squid's uh, still pretty good. Seven. Okay. Uh, well, we're up next. Let's, uh, I guess, swing with the little guy, uh, the brute, the single remaining <laughs> brute. Uh, we're going to use that second all out attack there for threes and threes. <clears throat> all hits and three wounds at minus two. Okay, oh, that'll just go right through, so. All right, so that's gonna be three, six, nine damage. Five up ward. We're gonna save four of them, take five. All right. So kill three more. One, two, three. So then we'll go with the Maw Crusher, who was very deeply wounded. So I did say we're using Destroyer this time. I'm also gonna use my third all out attack here. Okay. So I think we're gonna use a Triumph here. Try and clear out most of these before they flee and kill me. Yep. So we're gonna go for twos and twos on all these attacks. Okay. So the big ones first, twos and twos. So that's gonna be four at rend two. They're going right through. And that's 20 damage right there. Not too bad. So then on the beast, these are gonna be twos and twos as well. All right, so it's going to be five rent three, so that's going to be another 15. Oh, my mic's muted. I'm such a, I'm such a noob. Um, destroyer, all out attack, plus one to wound. Okay. Takes up one third of the unit. Let that sink in. Damage. Okay. So 35 total, not too bad. We'll have the five aboard save. And we're going to save 13, which is almost exactly a third. <laughs> Pretty good. So I'm taking 22. It has to kill 11 more guys. 
as long as you don't kill the herders, uh, man. I think we just move into battle shock there. Okay. And on my turn, I'm gonna go first and spend that command point so that he does not flee. Okay, let's see if we can uh, do some mortal wounds with our squids. I'm bravery three, you killed 16 of my squid herd. So I'm gonna be losing uh, basically 13 plus D6 uh, for 14, which will in the end leave me with just one squid remaining. That's but it'll ideal. Let's do some mortal wounds. <clears throat> Despite six squigs bouncing at the brute, only one makes contact and the Oryx survives with one wound left, as does the mega boss on That's Mothrusher. That's unlikely. But only because he gained a wound through strength from victory. Yeah, I was, okay. I was hoping Okay, that so let's just, uh, let's just think about this. Like, so at the very beginning of the game, he did not attack with the herd. The herd stayed in his zone, and then he got a reinforced unit of brutes and a Mega Boss of Maw Crusher attacking him with the Wa. Okay. If he charged into them in their deployment zone, which Herd can do fairly easily, and if he had teleported up the Sneaky Snufflers or had mo or had positioned them uh, without a teleport at the beginning of the game in such a way that he could get them, then he does everything that he just did. Okay. But... With his opponent pinned in his deployment zone, without um, violent fury, and without the Iron Jaws walk, so he would have done the exact same thing, but with his opponent pinned back, and without his opponent having all the buffs up, he just would have like nom roared, chomped him, and the end. And the teleport is not that hard to get off because you just deploy Scragrod outside of thirty of their deployment zone. And he has plus one to cast, so you're looking for six on the dice. And, and you have um, <clears throat> primals, so it's like if you really value getting that spell off, you're just like, okay, so I'm just going to like deploy far back. I'm going to, whatever primals I get, I'm going to use uh, on this spell on this turn. And then, boop, teleport them forward. The, the, sn the snufflers, I mean, to make sure you get that five up ward off. Yeah, it would be able to take them both out <laughs> It's somehow. like, it would have just been so much more screens, nasty if it was in there. I'm, I mean, I'm like, really shocked I didn't get the brute. Um, but then was was hoping the mega boss was going to go down as well. But like he could have killed the the yeah, Crusher yeah. and the brutes, and been like, "Cool, your turn." Like you're pinned and you lost a bunch of your stuff. Like good luck to you. I have your objectives in your zone. Like it's just so scary. Uh, so that's it for Battle Shock. Uh, at the end of the turn, we're gonna. Hold one, hold two, hold more, yep, and score a tactic for five. Yeah, uh, so you're up a point right now, and I, I'm not feeling as bad as that turn looked. Uh, this is my first time ever playing with Squid Herd, um, and it was eye-opening. Be more <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> to see what, what they can do. How stronger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Squid Herd are very fast because of Unleash the Squig and because of uh, their run and charge. Like, let's just look at this for a sec, because why not? Because we're talking about herd. Okay, so squig herd get a five inch move plus one d six. Unleash the squig. Then in the movement phase, they get another five and one d six. Then they get one d six. This is their run. Okay. And then let's say that we want to have a seven inch charge remaining. Let's say we want to have a five inch charge remaining. Okay. So what we're looking at here in terms of their movement, I know you probably can't see any of these numbers. So what we're looking at here for herds movement is this is, so this is their move uh, in the hero phase and then their move in the, in the whatever. So this is something that is guaranteed. They can move 10 plus two D six and then they have a run Okay, this is not guaranteed, and then they have a 5-inch charge. So let's say that we want to include the, this 5-inch charge as their move, because realistically, we can do a 5-inch charge. So this right here is a um, very easy to obtain, this is almost a guaranteed amount of distance. Okay, well, this is almost a guaranteed amount of distance. So we'll say the average of 2d6 is 7, okay? So then that leads us to 22. So let's say that in the 2d6, we only get five, okay? So the range is gonna be somewhere between 20, and let's say on the 2d6, we get nine. So uh, this becomes 24. So this is 
the the comfortable range of movement for squig hurt this is so this 20 inches is if we roll low on both of our moves and we don't get to run and it's it's a five inch charge 20 is a very conservative amount of movement very very conservative okay um yeah like like get them like if they're 20 if they're 24 inches away right and so then okay so then on on battle plans right now the majority of battle plans you're if it's um you're either looking at an 18 inch gap between deployment zones or you're looking at a 22 inch gap between deployment zones so if you position your herd on the line right which you should um regardless if you're going first or second you should position your herd in the most aggressive position possible because either they're going in on turn one or they are um or they're like uh you're going second right so either way if your opponent has like really strong alpha strike potential then okay so you put your herd on the line so that you're creating space for everything behind but um you know it's like you're gonna get them and this is without the 1d6 right as soon as we throw so if we wanted to throw this 1d6 in there like if we if we can get the run it's like okay so what we're doing is we're going 5 plus 1d6 plus uh 5 plus 1d6 so here's the unleash the herd and then we have another 1d6 and then let's say we have a seven inch charge to, to make no, let's keep it at a five inch charge. So then it's like, uh, we're, we're doing 10 plus three D six, uh, plus five. So we're doing 15, 15 plus three D six. Um, so the average there is 10. So, uh, that let's say we're going, um, with a, f yeah, let's, oh my God. The average here is, is on three D six is 10. Um, so let's say that it let's say we only get six on these okay and then let's say we get um uh 12 on this like if you can get the runoff right like if you can get the runoff and this is with a five inch charge so it's like you can go 27 inches or i guess you would go 22 inches and then have a five inch charge right like all of these numbers are with a very a very like easy uh charge roll to do whoa toddler aggro it was painful let me tell you yeah, yeah. uh yeah i think uh, i think the the only major mistake there was not fighting with the brutes first mm. <laughs> i think i think if they had gone first and knock down that squig herd we probably would have done a lot more than nine damage yeah well the um, the the pig not killing the snufflers and triggering uh, many destroyers yeah. again was smash a big yeah. the smash and bashing yes that was that, that was definitely uh pretty brutal but yeah. uh you know it's a dice game so yeah now we know for moving forward to fight with brutes first before yes because <laughs> obviously we saw like the amount of damage that they had getting to attack with everything well before the mortals right yeah yeah very very scary very scary yeah so it sets us up where I feel like, I was originally thinking this was gonna be a very quick game. It still may be, um, but I, there's more to it. I have more play than I thought I was going to. So this is a very big priority going into round oh, two. Oh yeah, let's see it. Okay, that's a four, uh, we are tied. Break ties. I break ties. Steve, I don't think there's any way I can give this away. Are you uh, sure? <laughs> I'm pretty positive, so. We're gonna uh, keep up with the, the squiggly shenanigans and jump into Gloom Spike Gets turn two. Uh, we'll start off with Primals rolling for both of us. We both get two. All right, so for my battle tactic, I'm gonna go for Magical Mayhem here, actually. So to kill something with magic. Uh, so it's a bit of a risk, but it's one I wanna get out now while you have a couple low health stuff. Yeah, I mean, it is pretty I'm risky. And then just gonna go for heroic leadership with Scragrot. He fails. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to go for some heroic recovery. Scragrot right having that extra so CP. So three, eight. Uh, we're gonna get that on D3 back. We're gonna get one wound back. Okay. I am then going to uh, return some squigs. And, yeah, so here uh, it is, on right? On two ups, I'm gonna get D3 so for each of my six herders. six dice, yep. and what does he need? Two ups? 
Uh, I lose one herder. Right, so he's going to get five, an average three of 10. Squigs. Is he going to hit actually straight average? For 11. All right. Yay. <laughs> and then I'm also going to rally so up some that's, uh, um, there. Don't forget, too, that they're all and on a 5 on board, one and group. they're all two wounds each. So it's like, oh, and then into the hero on average, proper, you're returning start off with 20. Spell casting, going for the big fangs of the bad moon with, with a 5 on board. 20 wounds. It's going off on an 11. That's oh 11 boy. dice. That's going to oh. hurt. And I will throw a couple primals at that. 15. 20? 20? <laughs> yeah, it goes off on a 20. I mean, if I don't get this, uh, I think I'm going to lose my Maw Crusher. Uh, so that's an 8. Uh, I don't think I can beat that Okay. in any way. All right, well, you called it. We're doing uh, 11 three-ups into a mega box. <laughs> Jeez. And we're going to get at least two. Nine mortal wounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, so he's Five mega buffs. That's unfortunate. So that's going to be the battle tactic, though, which is very handy. And then for a second cast, Gradroth's going to cast Daddy. Itchy Nuisance, Daddy. Uh, which will just barely go off on a six. And he's going to put Itchy Nuisance on the Dord Rentas. So strikes last. Then the squid boss is going to give yellow lurkas to uh, my bounders, and the madcap shaman is going to cast Horfrost. Hold on one sec, hold on. Which goes off on a nine. We're going to put it on uh, those bounders, on the, the gobs, on the squigs, which is going to make them hit on twos. Forgot to do uh, the moon, so we'll see if the moon moves. Really late on the moon. Uh, it does. Yep, so yep. now it's in the center of the board, so it covers everything. Nice. Oh boy, you're running charge everywhere. Yeah, not complaining about that. Then at the start of the movement, the sneaky snufflers are going to try and give the ward save to those uh, bounders as well, which they do. But that's it for the hero phase, and we'll jump into movement. Where's all the iron jaws? Okay, so uh, I'm going to spend that command point and redeploy those pigs there. Okay. Probably We're just big. shouldn't have moved them. Two inches. So Probably just shouldn't have charged with the bounders. I don't know what the charge was like before. And I think but... that's honestly all the movement I, I'm going to do here. <laughs> um, and we can just jump into charges. <laughs> we'll start off with those bounders. And they'll have impact mortals on four ups. Is going to be six mortal wounds. Oh, wow. All right. So slappy. And that's all the charges, like so a Iron Jaws are I'm basically I'm off the you. table. Did I get it? Uh, you roared me. I think I'll just uh, go for a Titanic duel. And then with the Gord Rentas fighting last, as I said, I'm just start off combat with the Mangler Swig. And because the mount is all buffed up with his uh, loadout, we're going to start there first. The gobs will be on twos and threes. Twos and twos, actually, sorry. Yeah, twos and twos, I was um, So say. it'll be three at Ren 2. So it's going to put us on sixes. Those four up saves, yo. Save any of those. D6 each for 13. Whew. Yeah, like get I think he's out got of here. one left. We'll see no, if the balls and chains toast. can finish him off. They do get the left. plus one hit and wound as well. I thought he had 12. Amount. No, maybe he's. And maybe that's four at Ren 2. Well, oh, I'm going to need four sixes here. <laughs> and we don't get that, so that's going to definitely kill the big. Uh, well, you got the brutes to fight next. Yep, so we're going to go ahead with them. So on fours. Yeah, they're not going to do anything, dog. on threes. Uh, so that's going to be three damage. Okay. So they're still buffed. And then the special weapon. So this is the Mighty Gore Hacker. Yeah, like uh, roll away. Ones. It's not going to be enough. And one at minus two. Goes through. three damage. Okay, so six total. You'll kill three oh, no, squigs. Oh, three squigs. Then we'll go next with the bounders. And they're going to get all out attack for free from Yeah, Stragrot. why didn't the pigs fight uh, next? Well, I'm definitely going to all out defense right there. So we're going to do the gobs first, which get the extra attack on the, the charge. So a casual 40 attacks, doing immortals on sixes, and hitting on twos. So it's just four mortal wounds to start. That's going to be 20 attacks at rend one. So with an all-out defense, it's going to put us back on a four plus save. And I'm going to fail 14 of those. OK. <laughs> then we got the riders up top. Who are to be hitting on threes and threes. Uh, no mortals on these ones, but they will be Ren 2, 2 damage. Yep. And that's 10 going through. So 10 to minus 2 is going to put us on a 5 plus save. And it looks like we're only going to save three of those. So 7 times 2 for 14 is going to take oh, out oh the base. 
Well, uh, we got a couple of squids left with the herd, so we're gonna like the game's the over, man. There'll be fours and threes to hit. The game's already it's it's over. That's gonna be ten at rend one, one damage. All right, so we're saving on flags again. So we're gonna take four, which is just enough to kill the unit. He's, like he's not tabled, but he's got what two war chanters and Zogrok left. Well, uh, that was definitely a turn. Um, again, showing the pretty insane lethality of these guys. Um, oh, yeah. Especially at your attacks with the buffs. Notable that, I, you know, when you get the, you know, automatic actually mortals on. I mean, the only thing here is that, like, okay, so here's the story of the turn. The squig player was like, whatever. Like, do I even... I'll, sixes. Let's the, recap the, it at the end. Only thing I had to roll for was the sneaky snuffler buff, which I got off. Didn't doesn't really matter here, but um, and I did get Horfrost off, which is obviously super helpful as well. Yeah, but not. With, it's uh, not going to matter that much. Forty some odd. I think it was forty yeah. gob attacks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, it definitely uh, puts into perspective how crazy these guys can be. And I do also get to roll at the end of the hero phase to see if I can bring back five founders. I do. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> More kits. Yeah, just a casual uh, recursion. Yeah, a casual no recursion. Not that That's good right. At all. I it's am not scoring just four points here. There was a world in which I could have teleported something, um, but with so many threats in my face, I just wanted to kind of prioritize dealing with those. The spell was big, um, both for killing the Maw Crusher and then being able to do the fights last on the Arcane Bulls that killed the Maw Crusher. Yeah, obviously, as we saw, activate both places first, which. Uh, yeah, it was wild. Um, there are still orcs left on the table, though, Steve. So the fighting is not over. <laughs> yeah, it is. Aaron Come John. on, guys. Okay. I think I have to find a tower. Okay. Led into the maelstrom. Or mighty destroyers. Okay. Why? And trying to degrade. <laughs> Move some guys up. Two and, uh, squads of brutes. Yeah, that's, the, that's my movement phase there. Okay. Into the tra yep. charge here. Eleven. So. Zog Rock and that's War Chatter Charge. Let's go to combat. I think I have to start with Zog Rock. Auric what? Hero fails to deal even a single wound. Okay. Where's the Auric fails to deal any damage with Zog Rock? <laughs> oh, well, this kills him too. No more. Got it off, didn't uh, <laughs> to be able to Looking at round three. That's a three. That's yours again, sir. Yeah, okay. It's in the middle. So, for a uh, I, do have to I don't even know, like, be... what there's left to do here. Do not, so that's yours. Enter, yep. right. Then there's swigs. He's just going to eat stuff. Two, three inches. Shoot stuff. Yeah, okay. Let's jump into charges. We're going to roar the And that's where I will all out attack. One with all its defense. Uh, I think I. Image to the five bounders. And then we got the huge mangler. We're going to start off with the mount, of course. The loon boss on Mangler Squigs deals exactly 15 damage to precisely take out the brutes. Mangler doing work. Lastly, the two bounders try to take down the lone remaining auric hero. Uh, and we fail three. That's enough to kill him. Oh, Ugh, to the wound. wound. Well, uh, they will have to take a battle shock and test. And he's three of them. I had one of the time right. I got CP out. Uh, a ton of CP, so I'll inspire them. Steve, it's going to be... I think I think that's uh... <laughs> hold on two more. Uh, we'll death the you know easy intimidate and. Uh, Here's your five point turn, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we uh, we did it and. Tabled them round three, but the really the game, game ended in round two. The little green skins are the mighty green skins. Okay, so here's the story of this game. Okay, turn one, the squig player, uh, like moves some stuff up, and does a poor job of screening on the right, the loon shrine on the right side. Cool. Turn two, turn one, iron jaws, uh, charge. Wah. Smashing and bashing once, and then that's it. And then after that, it was just a nightmare for the orc player. A bunch of brutes went down, mega boss took a bunch of damage. Mega boss popped everything he could, did not remove the unit in front of him. 
i.e. the squigs, did not remove the squigs from the table. And uh, then it was just a steamroll from there. Then the squigs were just rolling over the iron jaws from there. Just l like ludicrously rolling over the iron jaw player from there. Uh, and then tabled them by turn three. Right? By turn three. Um, that was it. Done. Game was over, uh, to be honest, like in that first round. In that first, like, but when, when we knew that the squig player had was going second in round two. That was the game. The game was already over. It was like, well, my bounders are here, so they're going to get buffed up and they're going in. So that's a ton of damage on that unit of pigs. And uh, yeah, and then everything else is just where it needs to be and it's going to keep fighting and chewing through stuff. And, and that's the game, right? Like you're not, the recursion doesn't matter. So he didn't need to lean into it this game, I guess, right? Uh, the squig list was pretty good. Um, like it's pretty close to what I run and that's it. So it's like, yeah, iron jaws just get, just get slain even, uh, yeah. Like I'm not sure what you're supposed to do as an iron jaw player against, uh, against the squig -alanche. Let's just look one more time at, um, at squigs and, uh, at herd and, the, and their movement and what that means. Because uh, it's to me, it's really important. It's really important uh, for herd players. Okay, let's check it out. So we're gonna go to a whatever random battle plan. So what are we on here? Power flux. Okay. Cool. Here's our deployment zones. Cool. Let's throw some random terrain on here. Boom, cool. Uh, gets. Is this my squig list? This looks like a really old list. Yeah, this is a really old list. This is when I was just starting out squigs. Do I have another one? Uh, probably not. Is this gets? This is just like all the gets. But that doesn't matter because all we're paying attention to here is herd. And let's say we're going to use a squig boss and sneaky snufflers. These are the only things that really matter. And let's just say that we also care about um, our spell. So let's say our fungoid cave shaman and here's our loon train. Okay, so let's say whatever, we're going to stick our loon train here, right? Three away from our, our train. Our little caster with climbing hand is going to hide behind it. No problem. We're going to take our herd and we're gonna stick them on the line. So whatever, let's get them in uh, three stack like this. Boom. Our little herd, or um, whatever squig boss is gonna be just nestled right in behind them. Um, so on this map, without knowing anywhere that my opponent is deploying, I'm just gonna like try to deploy everything. I'm gonna try to shoot through the middle is what I'm gonna try to do. So then it means that I, where I'm going to want my squig boss is probably somewhere tucked in here. So we're just going to stick him right where he wants, in a straight line to where he wants to be. And then snufflers, it doesn't really matter, but we'll stick him back here. Okay. Our fungoid cave shaman is going to be wholly outside of 30. Okay. Okay, good. So whatever. I'm two drop. I go first. Unleash the squigs. So five plus D6. So nine inches. Cool. We get to move nine inches. So let's see, let's just take our stuff here in the middle and we're going to go up nine inches. And I, of course, reserve the right to pull them back if I want to pull them back because you can see that we're out of range of sneaky snufflers. Okay, so here we have a small, oops, we have a small choice that we can make with, with this if we wanted to. Oh, and we're going to put the moon, whatever, in this, this quadrant over here. Let's say that we're going, let's say that we're going to go this way. Okay, so what we can do with sneaky, with the herd is that if we want to, we can pull them back and we can keep them within range of stinky snufflers if we want to. So let's say let's say that 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 is our plan and then that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so after this move, we also have to make sure that we uh, trail some dudes back so that we are within range of the squig boss to touch them. Cool. Okay, movement phase, same thing. So we got a slightly above average roll. So let's say we get a slightly, whatever. Let's say we get three. So they can move eight inches. 
Um, and then, so sneaky snufflers get their, get their, um, their, um, their ward off, right? Because it's on a, um, because uh, we're there within the light of the bad moon, right? So this with, um, uh, is fine. Like they just get their thing. Um, and then these guys are moving eight inches. Okay. Um, the squig boss, uh, can run. So he can either go six or he can go 11 if you wanted to make sure that he sort of gets up into a strong position so that he's able to keep buffing, right? You can just auto run him six. Um, we're going to teleport with our uh, staff of sneaky stealing. So we need six on the dice. Cool. No problem. So our snufflers, we're going to teleport our snufflers, even though we don't need to. And I don't know, we're going to, let's say we're, we're just going to put him right here. We're going to stick every toe onto this objective and... Um, we're actually going to go, we're actually going to move, we're going to, well, we have to be outside of nine of them, right? So let's just assume, you know, that we have to be like back here somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our snufflers and we're going to position them so they are uh, outside of nine of their deployment zone, just in case they're lined up right here. But you can see the zones into which the snufflers are going to be able to uh, continue to give their wards. So we're just going to pay attention to that. And then this, you'll notice that we haven't, we didn't run with the squigs, like we didn't run with the herd, and we kept them back a little bit to make sure that they were within sneaky snuffler range, and we made sure that they are set up to be buffed on the next turn, and look how far they are away. This is no run, and this is with an average of seven, and we held them back a little bit for the sneak for the first sneaky snufflers, so it's like they're charging, right? And let's say that they charge up like whatever like to here right and so when they do charge all that we're going to make sure is that they're still within sneaky snuffler buff range and we're going to make sure that they are still within three inches of our uh of our boss so whatever however that looks it just means that you leave a little base like these guys are not coherent right they have to be touching base to base like they have to be as tight as they can be but because they're 25 millimeter bases it means that we can just leave a little trail we can leave a little trail back to the squig boss and then it you know it's like okay so the squig boss is a little bit exposed on this side so maybe he could have been over here on this side but you know we have the rest of our army so we can take whatever other units that that we have like some stabbers or whatever it's going to be and we can just kind of like throw them up you know like grab on grabbing onto this objective and just taking up some space here no problem but you can see how easy it is to be super aggressive with herd so you just kind of go Right? And then these snufflers are going to sit here, right? They're going to sit on this objective. They're going to have a, a nice ward. If our, if let's say that we're going second, we could have picked these two objectives if we wanted to be really nasty, right? Like, you got to, you got to get in. You got to go with your herd. You got to go with your herd, I think. I think the vast majority, I think if you're playing King's Gets in the Clammy Hand, I think that you go every time because it's like worst case scenario they all die okay well then you're bringing them back like if i go at you and then like i don't know you just with rolling four dice to try to get a four up to bring one unit back it's like you kind of almost want them to die anyway i don't know what what'd you think of that game like what'd you think of that game makes me sad iron jaws makes me sad like subscribe you know what to why why